Josh. And I'm Kevin, and today we're going to take a look at the science of ice. Specifically, we're going to take a look at some scenes from the Disney animated movie Frozen to see how accurately the scientific events were portrayed in the film. Even if you've never seen the movie Frozen, I think everyone is familiar with the song Let It Go and their ever amusing snowman Olaf. Spoiler alert, this movie is based on a young queen named Elsa who can magically freeze things. The amazing properties of water are a great place to begin our discussion. Water molecules are bent and the two hydrogen atoms do not form a straight line with the oxygen. Water molecules are loosely held together by bonds that are constantly making and breaking. When temp drops to zero, these bonds begin to hold fast, creating a hexagonal lattice, an ice crystal. In the lattice, the bonds hold the molecules far apart. It is th that sudden separation that makes ice much lighter, less dense than liquid water. Now that we understand how water freezes, let's take a look at what happens when a body of water appears to be frozen. In this clip, the animators get this right, as we see ice being harvested from a frozen lake. The blocks of ice float with about 90% of the block below the surface of water. In this scene, you can see Elsa magically creating herself an ice castle in the mountains. There is a lot going on here, so let's stop for a minute and take a look at this snowflake she just stomped into the floor. While the image is clearly one that most moviegoers will definitely identify as a snowflake, the angles are not quite significantly accurate. To better illustrate this point, let's take a look at this image of an actual snowflake. As you can see here, there are some obvious differences in the angles which would affect the actual formation of a snowflake. The spikes at the end of the real snowflake maintain the 60 degree angles that appear at the center. That snowflake could connect to another and maintain the hexagonal pattern. As we can see, the interior spikes on Elsa's flake form a smaller angle and do not continue with the hexagonal pattern. Unfortunately, Elsa's flakes are not consistent with nature. The bigger question should be, is it possible to make ice or snow by touching it? In an everyday setting, the answer would be no, which is why Elsa's powers are magical. However, you can create a similar effect of creating ice if you try this experiment at home. Like any crystal, ice doesn't form spontaneously, even in super cool water, which is well below zero degrees. It needs a seed, a template. It needs something that will blow the whistle. An initial point saying, start here. Try dropping a piece of ice into a bottle of cold water. The ice acts as the initial starting point on which the rest of the ice grows. Now the ice that we saw in this clip was obviously very hard. Let's take a look at the softer side of frozen water. One of the most recognized characters from Frozen is Olaf the Snowman. Disney relied on Elsa's magic to create this talking snowman in the movie, so they obviously didn't get too scientific here. Our question is, Do you want to build a snowman? Let's take a look at another experiment, one that lets you actually create a snowman yourself. First, you'll need to freeze some water on a plate. When it's frozen solid, place the plate on a flat surface and pour some water on the top of the ice. Look at how quickly this builds up into a slushy material you can use to sculpt your very own snowman. You can even decorate your creation by adding a carrot for a nose, straws for arms, candy bits for buttons, and even googly eyes. Who says you need to wait for a winter or a snowstorm to build a snowman? Look at this picture of a real fountain in comparison to the fountain in the palace. While the finished effects are similar in appearance, you can see the distinct differences between an artist's rendering of a magical freezing of a fountain and a real fountain frozen by nature. In conclusion, Disney did get certain things right in their depiction of ice and all things frozen. However, they lean more towards an artistic portrayal of ice rather than a scientific approach. I hope you enjoyed this analysis of Frozen, the science of ice. Now go have some fun and try those experiments. We'll be frozen. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're going. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, right? Yeah. It's okay. Alright, you ready? So yep. Conclusion did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. We should have like a bloopers at the end. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny.